first question I have has to do with what classes in particular are going to look like. I know you're offering students the ability to either learn from home, a hybrid, be in class, um, but are teachers and students going to be wearing masks when they are in class? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, it, it, with indoor spaces, we require the wearing of masks. Uh, um, uh, it, uh, if social distancing is not uh, possible, and so uh, that would, the expectation is that people would wear masks. Do you have an idea for how many students, percentage of students and staff you're going to have on campus at any one point in time? Have you drilled down into numbers that deeply at all? Um, I'm, I don't think we've broken it down and it's going to vary by day to day because remember some of the classes uh, are, are blended classes which might have some part of the normal weekly schedule being an, an on-campus day and some part being an online day and so the fraction of people uh, our classes that are meeting on Monday might be different than on Tuesday might be different on, on Wednesday. Um, in terms of the total uh, uh, the last numbers I saw was about 57 percent of the course sections will have uh, a version of the in-person instruction or in-person blended uh, instruction. Okay. One of the interesting things I saw is you're going to be offering no cost COVID testing at, at your health center. Right now, I think most people are waiting anywhere from five to seven days to get results back. Is that still the case with you on campus? And do you expect to pretty much be around the average of what the state is seeing through your test results? So we've uh, secured a supply of what is a rapid antigen uh, test, which allows, I think, turnaround to occur, occur within a 48 hour uh, period. So uh, the, the, the test that we were able to secure uh, should be able to be done quicker than what you may often see on the outside. Okay, um, as far as housing for students go, I saw some of the things you're doing for moving and whatnot, um, but, but as far as housing in general, I, when I was talking with the Eastern Michigan president, President Smith, um, they would made the guarantee that any student who wants a single dorm room can get it. That's probably a heavy lift for most institutions. Um, but what are you going to say to a student if they say, I want to be on campus, but I I'm just not comfortable having roommates? Yeah, so we have a supply of apartments. Uh, we have a supply of single rooms. Um, um, but the honest answer is not all of our rooms uh, are going to be either singles or, or apartments. Uh, and so uh, we try to match the students with their priorities because, uh, as you say, some may want to live alone, uh, but there may be others who, who like the, the idea of having a roommate. Uh, and so but what we've done for those places where people uh, have are living with uh, somebody else is try and get rid of or try and minimize uh, big places where people might congregate uh, uh, common areas uh, so to, to minimize those uh, which lowers some of the risk uh, in, in those residence halls and also to get rid of common bathrooms. Uh, so uh, the, uh, when I was in college there was sort of one bathroom on, on the hall uh, and, uh, and so uh, we, we, we're not going to residence halls where that is the setup. So typically there might be just one for you or maybe one for you and your roommate but not in a, in a common situation. So we've tried to minimize the number of common areas where there might be increased risk of exposure uh, in addition to offering options for singles. Okay, um, I also saw dining. There will be dining in campus cafeterias and dining halls, but that's going to be reduced as well, correct? Yes, uh, so we're going to continue with uh, our uh, uh, grab and go options that we've been doing through summer, uh, where students can get their food and go back and, and eat uh, or eat outside or eat in the residence halls and so forth. We will have some uh, dine in capacity uh, as well, but again, we're going to be, we, we've eliminated much some of the seating so that people can be six feet apart, so social distancing uh, can be maintained. We're going to change the flow of uh, of the traffic through the, the restaurant so everybody's not queuing up at the salad bar at the same time, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, so uh, we, we're gonna have a, a safer for those people who choose to wanna do in, in place, in-person dining. Right now, um, the state of Michigan is still not allowing gymnasiums to be open, uh, privately run gymnasiums. Um, do you have plans on what you're gonna do for student workout facilities? Are those currently closed and will they be closed as we go into the semester or are those going to be open in some respect? 
So the, uh, our Student Rec Center uh, is right now offering classes. They're online, they're, they're, uh, they're not in-person in classes. So they are continuing to do some types of workout act activity, uh, but people are doing it virtually as opposed to in-person. Uh, and whether we'll be able to open for in-person exercises uh, entirely depends on, on the governor's uh, orders. Uh, clearly, I would expect if we did that, there would be uh, new cleaning protocols, there'd be more distancing between workout machines, things like that, where we would have to comply with whatever restrictions she puts on um, gymnasiums or, and workout facilities. So let's assume, and I think it's a safe assumption, that we're going to have people who do pop, uh, test positive. We're going to have people who develop symptoms. I just think the, the odds of that are probably very strong. What are you going to do? Are there going to be any, I think I remember reading in your, in your comeback plan that there are isolation options that you're going to have on campus if you need to quarantine someone. Is that correct? That, that, that's correct. I mean, we're, we're going to clearly going to work and continue to work very closely with the county public health department uh, with regard to what are the protocols should anybody test positive uh, with regard to how you do contact tracing and then around uh, quarantining of them and potentially other people that they may have been in extensive contact to. Within the residence halls, we'll have a capacity to uh, quarantine uh, individuals uh, that would be part of our, our protocol uh, as well. Okay. Um, I spoke with Central Michigan's president recently, and I know they made the decision to freeze tuition going into the next school year, and I, have, I didn't see anything on the decision that Western had made. Did you make a decision at all on, on raising or maintaining tuition for the next, next school year? Yeah, well, actually, we did make a decision back in May that we would freeze tuition and that we would also freeze room and board charges. So uh, neither of them went up this year. We tried to be responsive to the pressures we ensure that families are facing given the, the economy and, and the COVID crisis. Okay. That's why I couldn't find it. I was only looking about a month or two back. You guys made the decision <laughs> a while ago there. Um, I want to ask a question real quick on behalf of my sports director. Um, I assume that you guys are going to be following direction of the MAC, just like CMU like uh, Eastern. Um, how up in the air right now is sports for you? I, I would imagine, just like anything else, there are a host of questions that you can't come close to answering. So how are you navigating this with sports right now, just in, in broad terms? So, you know, I, I was just on a conference call with the other presidents from the MAC <laughs> earlier today, uh, and we're trying to assess where we are, and then we're looking at the other conferences and, uh, and trying to assess where they are, and, uh, and there, there are lots of, of moving pieces, I, I think. Uh, everybody's trying to figure out what's a way, uh, is there a way uh, to do things safely and putting uh, the safety of our student athletes and our campus community at the top of, of the list. Uh, I would say if you've, uh, your sports in, uh, information director will see some conferences like the Ivies and the Patriot League have already made the decision to move their sports to the spring. Many other conferences have decided to move back the date to which they would start uh, playing sports. Some conferences like the Big Ten say they're only going to play within conference games and they're not going to play out of conference games. Um, I, I think it is a moving picture. Uh, and again, uh, people are looking at the intersection between games and decisions about health because the uh, health protocols that the NCAA is putting out uh, require testing. Can we do it? Can we do it in the time frame that people are talking about? Does it make it, it even feasible. So it's a, it, it is a moving, uh, multi-dimensional, <laughs> has lots of implications. Uh, uh, if you move things to the spring, can you play all the games in the spring? How would you do it in the spring? Anyway, uh, and, and you can well imagine this, just the scheduling that goes with. So yeah. uh, the honest answer is we're going to try and we're trying to come to res some resolution uh, in the MAC in a very short period, uh, but it, it's a complex uh, interaction between us and the other conferences who we play and what are our arrangements and obligations to them. Yeah, just a, two more questions before we get out. Um, in doing stories with public schools, there are a lot of worries by teachers. I'm sure you've seen the demonstrations. They are frankly afraid to go back to class and teach. I think about as much as one third of public school teachers in Michigan are considered high risk for COVID, COVID because of age or underlying conditions. What concerns are you hearing from your professors and your staff about coming back to, coming back to work in the fall? 
you know, I, I think whether you're a K through 12 teacher or you're a higher education teacher, people are worried about uh, their, their risks for exposures. We have uh, some people who have underlying conditions or live with somebody who has underlying conditions. Uh, and, and so there, there is uh, people uh, would love to be back and like their students and love the experience of teaching, but they also want to be safe. And so uh, the question is, uh, to us is, can we do this in a way that's safe? We went through every single building and every single classroom, uh, and we tried to calculate the capacity of that room given the six feet apart, the social distancing. And it ended up, we could use about a third of our seats, uh, maybe a little bit of, uh, more than that. And so that, that dictated how we thought about scheduling, what courses we're able to offer and so forth. So uh, between the masks, uh, between a cleaning protocol, between the social distancing, we're trying to make the, the environment for or faculty, staff, and students uh, as, as safe as they possibly can, but people people are worried uh, as they see the news and they see outbreaks around the country. Okay. Last question, then I'll let you go. I asked Dr. Mantella up here at GBSU if she thought that there was going to be any kind of permanence after all of this once life gets kind of back to normal, meaning will there be anything about higher education that you think will change and possibly not go back to the way it was. Is there anything in your mind that you see is going to be a permanent paradigm shift in, in, in college learning and the college learning experience? You know, I, I think people are learning a lot about how to to deal with in-person and not in-person uh, instruction or distance instruction in ways that they didn't do before. They've got experience with it. Uh, and uh, these hybrid models appealing to some faculty for some subject matter. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised that more of that kind of technological application continues to be used afterwards uh, because uh, for some subject matter, it may uh, change how they teach or how they change, how they teach certain parts of it. Uh, and I don't think people will just go instantly back to where we were in January or, or, or March of, of this year. Uh, and so some of it is likely to stay and to think uh, different ways uh, to convey different information to different sets of people. Some works really, really well. Some is rougher around the edges.